welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. Now in this session, we're going to introduce you to a company that may be new to you, Volition. It uses something called nucleosomes for early diagnosis of disease. To tell us more, we have its CEO, Cameron Reynolds. Cameron, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Now, DNA, there's two meters of it in each of our cells. And in order to stuff it into our cells, it has to be super coiled. And as part of the coiling process, you get these little things called nucleosomes, which I guess look a bit like beads on a string, and they're all wrapped up. But the critical point is that nucleosomes, you can find them in the blood kind of drifting around because they've, the, as cells die, they get into the bloodstream and you can pick them up. Is that a summary of, a good summary of, of what they are? Yeah, that's correct. So it's been shown for about 10 years now, the epigenetics, which means above genetics, the genetics of your DNA is extremely important. It's the switching mechanisms, highlighting the underlining but, uh, of, your, of your system. So every 200 base pairs of that two meters of DNA, there are nucleosomes and it's a very, as you said, a very complicated switching mechanism uh, of the epigenetic side and extremely important. And when cells die, uh, the body cuts up the chromatin into nucleosome sized chunks, around 180, 200 base pairs uh, to be reprocessed. So a lot of diseases have a very raised level of these uh, in your system. Are you probably aware cancer is very dynamic, a lot of births and deaths of cells. It's the deaths of those cells, the nucleosomes, which we can measure on our very simple platform in circulation, meaning in your blood. So just to be sure what we're talking about, these nucleosomes contain information which is not strictly your DNA's information, but if it, you like, it's uh, supplementary information. And what you're doing is you're picking up those nucleosomes in the blood and you're seeing whether they've got this supplementary information that may then tell you whether a person or an animal has a particular disease. Yes, Vivian, there's, there's hundreds of different structures on the nucleosome. They're very complicated, uh, very small, as you say, but very complicated. There's eight proteins and, and the DNA as well, and a huge number of, of, of alterations, uh, which we can measure on our very simple platform. It's ELISA, which is what, the format of most blood tests in the world. <clears throat> so it can be done on a, a, a tiny drop of blood uh, on any existing platform, um, an ELISA platform, which is, is, is the majority of blood tests. So although the marker we're looking for is uh, very unique and uh, incredibly important and cutting edge, uh, the platform we measure it on is in every lab in the world. So it's something that can be uh, rolled out very quickly and easily worldwide and can really be part of your routine blood work. So where does Volition come in and how are you going to develop and commercialize this? Yes, good question. So Vivian, we've been around about 11 years now and uh, we've spent that time developing this platform. Um, we're the only ones who looked for nucleosomes in circulation. I think there's been a lot of focus on the DNA, the genetics, um, but I think you'd, you'd have to say in, in a lot of respects, it really hasn't come to the fruition for really good early stage detection in anything like a routine test. Um, and epigenetics is really coming to focus now. And that's exactly what we do with our very simple platform. So uh, we've spent the time developing um, methods for detecting nucleosomes in circulation. As I said, a very simple, a very low cost, easy to use, very democratic platform um, that can be used in any lab. And uh, we now have shown we can measure them very robustly, routinely. Those are very important words for a, for a test that can be done anywhere. And now we're in the process of launching product. Now, during the pandemic and during lockdowns, uh, we have some very large cancer trials uh, running in the human space. But obviously, that's uh, been a little impacted by uh, the lockdowns in the process now. So we're focused particularly on our new QVET product in veterinary. Uh, no, no prizes for guessing vet, new QVET is vet. And uh, now we've, we've launched that now um, in Texas. And now uh, we've just signed our first deal and we're moving to do big worldwide deals uh, for the vet product while we continue to develop and launch products in all the other areas. So what kind of things are you detecting? You talked about cancer in humans. Are we talking also about cancer in dogs or is, is there something yeah, absolutely. else? Yeah, it's interesting. So the nucleosome structures are preserved through species. So uh, very much detectable in, in human in blood, 
and uh, in, in a very wide range of animals, cactus, things as wide as yeast, also have nucleosomes. So uh, we, dogs are obviously uh, our best friend, and uh, the market is even more dire uh, and in need for a, a canine screening test. Uh, dogs are actually more prone to cancer than humans um, because of uh, their inbreeding, and, and also uh, it, it's a factor of they, they get cancer at a much younger human age, eight or nine years. So um, there are actually more dog cancers diagnosed in the US every year than human cancers. Interesting. And uh, during the pandemic, it's something we could uh, still run trials on. Um, we're, we're spending more and more on our animals. So we thought we'd start with dogs as a, as a very important part of our, of, of our lives. And uh, all too tragically, cancer is diagnosed very, very late in dogs like in humans. So uh, our, our, our test has detected two very common dog cancers at a very high accuracy. Um, we're working with Texas A&M in Texas, uh, one of the world's best vet schools uh, who launched the product. And now, we, that was a beta launch, so we could really understand the test and everything about it. Now, uh, we've gone through all of that. We're launching, uh, first of all, in Asia through Sage, and then we're looking to launch worldwide with the very big vet companies. And we'd expect a lot of news on that in the coming uh, weeks and months. So is this for screening or for diagnosis? Um, so it's, it's a bit of everything. So our, our, because our, our um, assays could do a lot of different things, you can do asymptomatic screening. You can do what well, it's also for monitoring. You can also do it for uh, measurement of a lot of other areas. It actually fits into, we've actually got trials running in a very wide range of areas from screening, diagnosis, monitoring, also uh, um, things as wide as natosis, which um, if you look at our presentation, we talk about quite widely. And is also treatment monitoring as well. And also treatment response. Yeah, it turns out your epigenetics is extremely important. And our platform, uh, although we're a small company in size, uh, we have big ambitions and it can be used in a very wide range of areas. And, and that's what we're commercializing in, in a range of areas now. So in 2021, you've made this shift from being very much an R&D focused company to a company that's going to be a commercial company. So how have you added to your team to support your commercialization? Yes, uh, very good question, Vivian. So obviously, uh, we, the team was very much focused on developing the platform, getting our great intellectual property and, and proving we could measure what we're looking to measure, which we now have. So over the last year, we hired a range of people on the commercial side. Uh, we've got a new chief financial officer, Terry, who's very commercially focused. Uh, we hired a head of Volition Vet, uh, Dr. Tom Butera, who is uh, not only a vet himself, but also uh, came straight from uh, the world's biggest vet company um, in business development. He's been fantastic in helping us uh, roll out the products. Uh, we took on our own commercialization uh, officer, uh, Gail Fortier, who's been absolutely fantastic as well uh, over all the products, and our first salespeople in, in Europe um, to also help push uh, another product we're launching called New Food Discover. So we've really strengthened the bench and we're continuing to do that um, because we think we have something very special and we need to now really uh, turn our fantastic platform into uh, actually helping people through products. Now you call this platform New Q. Tell me what that stands for. Yes, it stands for Nucleosome Quantification. So, I hope um, you've all taken notes. <laughs> yeah, what New Q stands for. And it's got the dot in the middle, don't forget, it's New Dot Q. Um, so yeah, and, and that's, it's over the, all areas of we have new Q itself is our marquee original cancer screening. We have new Q vet, new Q nets, and new Q capture, and all of which are using our platform in uh, different, very exciting ways. And um, are you still continuing to develop your R&D alongside this commercialization piece? Absolutely. So uh, what we're really trying to do is keep our R&D team uh, which is focused in Belgium, and that's where a vast majority of our uh, R&D team are. We've been extremely happy there. We have two facilities, a 20,000 square foot and a 10,000 square foot, and we're continuing to expand that. Uh, we're doing more work in Southern California now um, on some of the new Q capture work and more, sort of even deeper, deeper uh, work. Um, but yeah, we're very focused on the R&D side. Uh, we now have a production facility in Belgium as well. And um, so, we're trying to build, and we are building, a, a, a commercialization production team separate from R&D because we really want to stay on the cutting edge of epigenetics. And uh, I think we've done a fantastic job in developing what we have, but there's so much more to do. So we'll continue to be as innovative 
innovative as we uh, as we can. So finally, what are your key priorities for 2022? I think firstly, um, the VET is, has been launched. Uh, we have a very first deal with a regional player in Asia. We're very keen to sign a, a big deal with the big VET companies. And uh, we have very active negotiations going with a few of them. I'd, uh, I'd strongly hope and expect to see that soon. I would also really want to progress, pardon me, all the other areas from the new Q nets, get a, a, the first product launched on the C mark and can continue to progress our human work in the human cancers and also in uh, new Q discover and capture. Um, I think we can layer in lots of different areas, but I think the big news in the short term is going to be on the vet front as we uh, work with big companies to launch our product worldwide. It's a fascinating area. Thank you so much, Cameron. And remember, you heard about nucleosomes first on Edison Open House.